Hey guys, this is Allie Beck, your Section on Women's Health Student Special Interest Group Director of Communications. I'm here today with uh, Rebecca Stevenson and Megan Markowski of the Brigham and Women's Hospital uh, Department of Rehabilitation Women's Health Residency. Um, we're going to chat with them a little bit today um, all about the residency in case you're interested in applying this year. Um, would you ladies just like to introduce yourself a little bit for um, everyone watching? How much of an introduction do you want? Just tell us a little bit about your background, just a um, few sentences. Uh, okay, well, my name is Rebecca Stevenson. I'm currently the coordinator of women's health of physical therapy at the Brigham and been here for about 11 years, been in women's health for decades, and I've written a book on obstetric and gynecological care and physical therapy, done some study modules, and I also teach for the section. And Megan and I have a women's health residency here at the Brigham together. There we go. And I'm Megan Markowski. I'm a clinical specialist in physical therapy here at the Brigham and co-director of the residency along with Rebecca. I've been a women's health specialist for 15 years, been at the Brigham for almost 10. Um, and I too have taught and written modules for the section of women's health and do a lot of teaching at local physical therapy programs and uh, medical students in, in our area here in Boston. And so we're very excited to talk to you about our residency. And both of us have our uh, WCS. WCS. Perfect, great. Um, thanks for those introductions. We'll kind of dive right in. Um, just we'll start with kind of the basics of your program, some of the background logistics, um, what time of year does it start, how long is it, um, when are applications due, do you guys use the PTCAS system, um, all that kind of stuff. Sure, I can answer some of those. Yeah, we do use the PTCAS and we have a rolling admission and it is a year long residency and we have two requirements. One is that uh, people have taken pelvic health one uh, or and I'm sorry, and the obstetric fundamentals. Okay, and are both of those courses, do you prefer the section on women's health course or can it be from a different company? It can be from a different company as well. Okay, okay perfect. Um, uh, and you mentioned it's a 12 month long program with that rolling admission. Do you have uh, different residents starting at different times throughout the year? Uh, we haven't, we, we, we okay. like to keep the residency to one resident at a time. Okay, so there's just one resident, perfect. Um, are there any other uh, residencies at the Brigham um, in different settings, ortho or yes. neuro, or that the women's health resident gets to interact with or work with at all? Well, we have many students from different universities here, but only one other residency program, and that's a cardiac residency on okay. inpatients. Okay. So uh, we have a continuing education series that the resident can attend plenty of journal clubs. So there's lots of interaction with staff and student staff, but there's only one other uh, resident. Perfect. Um, how long has the residency program um, at the Brigham been around? Four years. Four years. Four years, okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you happen to know how many of the residents have passed their WCS after completing the residency? 100%. Perfect, that's awesome. Um, and you mentioned you just take the one per year. Do you see Correct. that expanding in the future or is it probably gonna be one for a while? Probably one for, yeah. You know, okay. We do really individual learning experiences and find that that is what produces the best resident and resident outcome is to do or focus our attention just on one. Okay, awesome. Um, that is good to know. Um, kind of in that same vein, based on your experience, um, what type of, um, of clinician do you feel does best in the residency? Someone coming just out of school, someone with years of clinical experience under their belt, um, who seems to really excel in the program? So that's a great question. So one of our other requirements is that we like to have uh, students who are full-fledged therapist for at least one full year prior to coming to be our resident. We find that um, 
persons who are interested in the residency having had a year at least or more of experience just being a physical therapist in general, preferably in outpatient orthopedics, to have that good orthopedic background prior to starting women's health residency also pr produces a very high caliber of resident. And they just do tend to do much better in the program. Okay, good to know. Have you, um, is that the, the only residents you've accepted? Have you ever accepted a new grad to the program? We have no. not. Okay, okay, um, great. Um, you kind of touched on that, but what are other other things that you look in look at for your ideal applicant? Um, what other experience besides that clinical experience do you look for? Um, other other qualifications that you would sure. like your residents to have? Yeah, we both can answer that, but we're we're looking for somebody who's enthusiastic about women's health. This is a, a very active choice for them. It's not something that they've just fallen into. They've shown interest and they've shown interest in multiple ways, whether they've joined the uh, student SIG or they've joined the section on women's health as a student member and participated in, in many different diverse ways they can participate, but we're looking for their passion and enthusiasm. Most definitely. And, and someone who can identify what type of learner they are to help us better foster their experience here throughout the residency is also another really great quality and someone who's, who's very open and, and communicative um, so we can facilitate the best learning environment for them. Great. Awesome. Um, what is kind of unique about your program compared to some of the other other residencies out there? You've already kind of mentioned you like your your residents to have a year of experience, um, but is there there are other unique qualities that you would say um, the Brigham program has? Well, I think that we incorporate them right into the staff, mm -hmm. but we protect them in terms of not having a full patient schedule. They have time to uh, develop a project, which we want them to do and also to spend a lot of time in self-reflection around cases and around their own experiences with those cases. And I think being such a big hospital institution with um, uh, patients from all over the world, um, we get a, a variety of, of patient populations, so different diagnoses that likely they won't experience at other institutions and opportunities for surgical observations and interactions with, you know, patient care at a level that being, you know, one of the best hospitals in the United States really affords us. So the resident gets to benefit from that experience as well. Yeah, that sounds really great. Um, so kind of based on that, being in that big hospital system, what are some of the settings that the residents are exposed to? Is it mostly outpatient? Um, do you do any inpatient or see any neurological patients? Um, mostly orthopedics or what, what type of um, patients are the residents typically seeing? So mostly they're in outpatients. Um, there is an opportunity to perhaps do something on inpatient high risk uh, pregnant patients there's the opportunity for that to observe. And also we have a breast center. So that's a very dynamic place working uh, with the physicians or in close harmony. We're also connected to a cancer center here. So there is a lot of opportunity for lymphedema experience, both upper extremity, face and lower extremity. And where our day-to-day -day, um, interactions occur is in our outpatient setting. So. Um, Although we are the ones who do women's health primarily here, um, we have, uh, we're surrounded by a bunch of orthopedic colleagues. We also have a, a neurological certified specialist on staff as well. So they can observe other patients with various diagnoses um, with some clinical uh, experts in, in that field. And so I do think, you know, one of the things that Megan already pointed out is that we get a diversity of populations. So we get people coming in from all around the world. So that means interfacing with different cultures, uh, translators and um, very advanced caseloads mm -hmm. and that's why we want someone to be very mature in their practice right. so that they can handle the, those types of situations that maybe another therapist wouldn't see for years right sure yeah it's kind of a whole nother layer to everything there yeah. um, awesome well uh, we've kind of talked about um, some of the other opportunities that 
that are available to the residents, some surgery observation, um, kind of some of the stuff that you, you just mentioned. Um, what are other opportunities available within the curriculum? Are residents able to teach anywhere? Um, I know you kind of mentioned a project. Does that involve research? Um, that kind of stuff. What, besides just treating patients and working on their um, clinical skills, what other opportunities are available? So Rebecca and I both do a fair amount of teaching throughout the year. So as the opportunity presents itself, we certainly um, will have our students come with us, or excuse me, have our residents come with us and observe our teaching experiences. And we do have a lot of medical students, residents and fellows work their way through our department. So we would like them to be involved with those interactions as well and their project is an op is up to them for the individual resident to decide what exactly they want that project to entail whether it's a full out research study um what have you but we do like for them to present it both to our department and whatever population would be appropriate for example one of our uh, former residents presented to the entire department of urology here at the brigham oh, cool awesome um so kind of your curriculum, um, what, how many mentoring hours or how is your mentoring structured through, um, through your, throughout the year, throughout the curriculum? Um, is there quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, or how, do, how does that look like? Yeah, so we have um, three hours a week of direct mentoring, one with me, one with Megan, and then one with the three of us together. Okay. So there's, um, and that's a time of self-reflection, case study review, and uh, assignments uh, is very self-directed. So we have extensive binders on readings, and we've divided up the residency by months so that there would be certain topics per month and re reading required, but nobody, you know, if, if you don't read, then you're not going to be able to participate in the discussion, but, you know, they have to be self-directed and move themselves along through the read. And we can give a, you know, an outline of it, but we're looking for a maturity to direct, self-direct. Sure, sure. Um, what, what certifications are sponsored through the program? You, you mentioned um, the residents coming in must have the pelvic floor one and the um, fundamentals of the obstetrics course. Um, do you uh, sponsor the lymphedema course through it? Um, or is that just experience that you get in the camp? Um, you would get it through experience. After six months, uh, you can apply to take some outside courses, which we would hope would be pelvic two, three, and obstetrics advanced. Okay. But um, those are done through part of the hospital uh, education, tuition reimbursement, and you know, you get a certification from us that you passed. Uh, and also one of our other requirements is that we, you have to pretty much ensure to us that you're gonna apply for the WCS. Right. right. Yeah. Um, are there any men's health or pediatric um, patients incorporated into the program? Yes, both. We see quite a, a large amount of male patients as well regarding pelvic floor as well as lymphedema. Um, and one of our other offsite clinics uh, um, a, about a half an hour away from our main site here in near Boston um, will do the pediatric component of the residency. Okay, awesome. Um, some kind of miscellaneous questions here. Um, what would you say currently is the residency's biggest area for growth um, and how is that being worked on? Jeez, we do so much self-reflection after every resident and take every critique that they offer and incorporate that as well. We also have new staff members that contribute to the learning. So um, it's just kind of a continual that as It's like an go. ongoing process, yeah. yeah. You know, because there's readings that are sort of outdated and we're, we have women's health meetings here and we're always reviewing articles. Megan, do you think we should include that article? Let's drop this one. Right. So there's, it's a constant self-review all year long. 
Okay, great, great. Um, so the Brigham is in the Boston area. What is your favorite part of that area and what do you guys like to do in your free time um, around there? Well, Boston's a wonderful city. There's so much it has to offer, whether it's major league sporting events or sailing along the Charles River or awesome fine dining and, and bar experiences here. Pretty much art, the MFA is gorgeous. There's so many different things that attract pretty much any interest people have to to Boston, we think, you know, certainly full of history and and it's just a really fun city to be part of. Yeah, and the sure, staff sure. is great too, yeah. you know. Somebody's already uh, automatically included in part of the staff activities mm -hmm. when staff gets together. Um, and then we have, so we have about uh, 16 staff members here at this site, 24 at another offsite, which they would have some experiences and then also inpatient and one other site in town. So in total, it's a large staff with all secretarial and everybody of about 170. Um, so we have a, a very high ratio of clinical specialists, orthopedics, neuro, neuro um, across the whole spectrum of our three outpatient sites. But for the most part, the resident stays at this one site. We give them other experiences, but they have a home base here. Okay. Great, that, that would be nice, definitely. Um, kind of feeding off of that, what is the likelihood of being hired on as a full-time PT after completing the residency? Yeah, you know, there's always that possibility, especially if somebody has shown, because uh, we have a long waiting list for patients, so there's a high demand, and we would love to take on one of our residents that we've trained, and that all depends on the um, uh, finances of the hospital at the time and positions available. So, sure. it's possible. Um, yeah, and kind of in the same vein, are there opportunities to stay on? Um, obviously, they would be hired on as the PT, but then working with you guys in the residency, um, or are you two kind of the the main mentors in the residency program right now? Well, we're the main resident or main mentors for the residents, but the you know anyone who was hired on after the residency we absolutely incorporate them as to part of the learning they work um with you know several of our other women's health specialists and lymphedema specialists to make a nice collaborative learning opportunity for them so we have three other staff that participate in the teaching okay and that certainly yeah. could be very easily added upon with the, the completion of a residency so one of the unique things that we have is a rehabilitative ultrasound imaging. Okay. So um, we can demonstrate and use that, but it may be something that we give one of the orthopedic predominant therapists to show how to show the multifidus a little bit better. And so that way we are continually collaborating with our colleagues. Right, not just solely the two of us. Sure, awesome. Um, one other kind of logistics question I didn't touch on earlier. Um, I saw on your website that the resident is, and you've mentioned, um, taken on kind of as part of the staff. So does, how does the tuition work for the program? Um, is it, does it come out of the resident's salary? Are they paying tuition? Is it both? So they're hired on at 75% of a full staff person. Okay. Um, so it's necessarily out of pocket for them other than whatever continuing education courses prior to the allotted time before their tuition reimbursement. Would okay. Okay. And um, they get benefits and everything else. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, is there anything else that you ladies would like to share with me um, about your program? It's, it sounds really wonderful. Um, well, I'm you know, I, th I think, you know, we're biased, but um, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we, we strive very hard to make this evidence-based. Mm -hmm. We have a very collaborative with our referring providers, whether they're midwives, GI doctors, urogynes, orthopedists, mm -hmm. spine surgeons. So um, I think that offers a little bit of uniqueness. Uh, we're very professionally active um, in doing things within the profession of the section on women's health. And uh, we're just really great gals. <laughs> 
Great. Well, thank you both so much for taking your lunch break to chat with me today. I, I really appreciate all the info and I know everyone watching well too. Um, and I look forward to seeing you both in the future. Yeah, Great. hopefully we'll see you in uh, CSM in yes. uh, New Orleans. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, you both have a great day. It was nice to meet you. you nice too, to meet likewise. you. Likewise. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye-bye.